Hi, on today's video, we're going to do universal valve codes. I think this is going to be a great deal because it's going to help close the gap between what shock builders know and what racers know. Universal valve codes. So what I found is I found this chart, okay, universal valve codes, and it goes from 1 to 20. Okay, now the beauty to this is we're not talking about shock builders having to change anything or do anything different. We're talking about the end user having this code or this chart and him being able to go to a shot guy and go, hey, I want a four and a four is 200 pounds at 10 inches. I want a four valve, okay? And then he looks at the chart and goes, okay, well, that's my five or that's my three or that's my whatever. So he doesn't have to change what he's doing. They don't know what they're numbers they're really talking about they're just saying a four you know and they're like oh, i want a four you know and guy dynoed it and it's 200 pounds so we're going to call that a four so this universal code is i think very good because it's not it doesn't make anybody change and we've always said you know a guy goes i want a 12 too well that 12 don't mean nothing to us shot guys it's just a number it represents high speed of a shock. It doesn't represent any low speed. It doesn't represent any bleed. It doesn't represent any, any pull time. So it's just something that is, it's just a number. It's just a high speed number that was given back in the day. And that's, that's why, and this chart is just a high speed number chart, uh, compression rebound. It's not, it's not, um, it's not low speed. And there are some rules of engagement on here that tells you things, but you know, if you look over here in the left-hand column, it starts at 1. It goes down to 20. It does start at 100 pounds. Some of the AFCO stuff starts at a much um, a much lower number, maybe like 60, uh, which this starts at 100. Okay? The, it is evened up. Compression rebound. Um, a twin tube shock or a lot of shock companies like AFCO or Pro, they used um, – a different rebound number from compression. The rebound was always higher than the compression on a straight valve shock. So if you had a three, it wasn't a 160, 160. It was a 160, 200. Um, this is listed compression rebound. My suggestion when you're talking to your shock builder would be to say, I want a 3C and a 4R or a 4R and a 3C. Doesn't matter which way you give it, as long as you tell them rebound compression. Call Call it C, call it R, okay? So it says, this is the standard for you to compare numbers for you and your customers. We are trying to establish a number system that someone outside the world of shocks can understand. These are high-speed numbers only and are at 10 inches per second and are from the average dyno chart, okay? So this isn't loss versus um, its average force versus average velocity, not absolute velocity. Average force versus average velocity. Low speed is based on a 100, a .100 hole or jet size with low speed, one inch, being around 8% of the high speed, okay? That's a kind of a standard for old time builds. When expressing compression or rebound, do it in such a way, a 3C and a 2R or a 2R and a 3C. Bilstein and other companies have been rebound first, compression second. Now, most every shot company now is compression first. I think Bilstein may have crossed over, but Bilstein had a reason for doing what they did. And I don't really remember what it was, but I remember at the time when I was told, I thought, man, that... That makes sense. So Rex Merritt may know that secret to that story. If he does, I'd love to have him comment on this. Um, um, or Pat that used to work at Bilstein, uh, because I would like to know. They told me one time why it was rebound first, and I thought, well, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, but express it, you know, because other companies were rebound first. Um, we typically don't do that type of high-speed shock. We're more about the low speed, about the Pacific call-outs of a shock. But 
High-speed numbers are based on linear pistons or digressive-digressive um, and a full-type bleed system. So it's not the new, there's a lot of linear digressive stuff going on today, so it's not that type of stuff. It's a, a digressive, uh, which was what Bilstein basically was based on. If you take a digressive piston and add a lot of bleed to it, you're going to get a very bell shape. If you take the bleed away, you're going to get a very uh, ramped up shape. So the, the idea of this is to close the gap between customers and builders, whether you're building Integras or Bilsteins or BSBs or Penske's or Pros or QA1s, whatever shock, ARS, whatever shock you're building, everybody has their own codes. So this is about understanding what those numbers might be. We deal with it every day. I've kind of come up with a system. I'll put a link in the description to a pressure chart that we use that kind of simulates others. It's what we use. This universal chart is, uh, I think it's a good chart, you know, and it's one everybody can use. It's not telling the builders they have to change anything. It's it's just giving the the, the, the racers something to base a number off of. So they know what a four kind of represents. I hope it helps. Um, again, if you guys need, we got all kinds of videos. We're getting ready to do a bunch. So stay tuned. Um, we're going to have some fun stuff coming up. Uh, as always, God bless. We'll see you the next time.